Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video we're going to explore animal adaptations specifically for the ecosystems they live in. So let's start off with my friendly elephant here. Ask yourself, what adaptations does this elephant have and why does it have these adaptations? So elephants are some amazing creatures and they have many adaptations that allow them to survive in a brutally hot type of ecosystem. So if we first consider their size, adult elephants can weigh about the same as four cars. So their size is their first adaptation. This allows them to be better suited to their environment because they are larger, they are more intimidating to other animals. So many predators choose to stay away from them and pick on someone their own size or smaller. Their ears are also an adaptation. With some elephants living in areas that reach scorchingly hot temperatures. So one way that elephants stay cool is by using their ears like fans. They flap their ears either side of their body to help reduce their overall body temperature. But they also have blood vessels, which are little tiny tubes inside the body that carry blood. When hot blood goes through these blood vessels, elephants can face into the wind and let the breeze cool down their blood, cooling their overall body temperature. Have you ever noticed that elephants have quite wrinkly skin? Well, actually, these wrinkles are very much a benefit. It helps them to stay cool. Because their skin is actually pretty thin, the wrinkles allow the heat to escape their bodies. So sometimes elephants will take a dip into cool water to escape the heat, and their wrinkles trap the cold water in, allowing them to stay cool for longer periods of time. Now we've got to mention an elephant's trunk here, because when you're a large creature with a short neck, a trunk is an extremely useful part of your body. So not only does it help elephants to reach food high up in branches on very tall trees, it also allows them to get food and water from the ground, which they otherwise wouldn't be able to access. But they also use their trunks to make calls to each other and other sounds in order to communicate and warn their herd of any potential threats. So now let's think about my lovely friend, the penguin. How has the penguin adapted to the environment that it lives in? Well, for starters, penguins have webbed feet, which are very powerful to help them swim. They also have very streamlined or narrow bodies to reduce the drag on them in the water. And their wings, shaped like flippers, also help them fly underwater at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour. Now, penguins also have to have a very high body temperature, so they need to remain active while they're living in the very cold climates that they do. So they have thick skin and lots of blubber or fat under their skin to keep warm in this cold climate. They also are dark in colour and have dark feathers on their back to absorb heat from the sun, again, helping them to stay warm. Penguins also have tightly packed feathers, which overlap to provide waterproofing and warmth. They coat their feathers with oil from a gland near the tail to increase impermeability, which is basically waterproofing themselves. And it's critical to penguin survival in water because Antarctic seas can be extremely cold when they're going for a swim. So ask yourself now, what is an adaptation? Well, adaptations are actually features. Features that help both plants and animals survive in a particular ecosystem that they live in. And these adaptations can be for protection, for the means of attacking other animals, for feeding themselves, for movement, or even to suit their habitat if you think about their colouring. So why don't you join me and create a little animal of your own? 
Here I've got three biomes that we find on our planet, hot deserts, tropical rainforest and the Arctic tundra. It would be great if you could select one that interests you the most and write down the name of that biome that interests you and two reasons why it interests you so much. Now you've done that, we've got so many different animal adaptations that we could consider for the animal we're about to create for our specific biome we've just selected. So we've got big feet, dark skin, big ears, long tail. There's so many animal adaptations out there. So what I would like you to do is create yourself a little list. A list of adaptations you think would be useful for an animal living in your chosen biome. Now we've got our list, we're now thinking about creating our animal. So on one whole page, whether that's in an exercise book, on a piece of paper, I would like you to draw your animal. And I would like you to include all the animal adaptations that you have just put in your list from the previous task. This animal is your own unique animal, so it can look any way you like. It can be any size, any shape, anything you want but you have to keep your specific biome in mind while you're designing your animal. Now we've drawn our animal let's think about the adaptations that you've included. And for each of those adaptations, can you explain how it would help your animal survive in that particular biome? For example, if we were designing an animal for a hot desert biome, potentially this animal might be pale in colour and that will help the animal reflect light so it will not get too hot. So what were the reasons that you included each of the adaptations on your animal? Can you add those labels onto your animal to show this? And finally, the best part of this activity. You've got to give your animal a name, so make sure that you include this right at the top of that piece of paper, nice and clear, to show us what your animal's name is going to be. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed making your animal. If you enjoyed these videos, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.